My check one, two, three. <clears throat> All right, welcome to Overtime, and uh, you guys heard before where you guys can hear us, but uh, guys, special introduction we got, to a great, we got a guest, right? The, no, no. To the bench, no, man. Integration to the bench. Integration to the bench. My man's going to get this ass stitched onto this bench with us. <laughs> guys, welcome. <laughs> He's not here with us today, or is he? He's always here with us. Put the mic on his mouth, Edgar. Put the mic on his mouth. Put the mic on his mouth. <laughs> Put the mic on his mouth. Come on. Yeah. There you go. Diego's here, guys. Diego is motherfucking here. What's up, Diego? What's going on? What's up, cutie? Yo, what's up, guys? What's going on? Yeah. Give me a little bit of a uh, Diego, welcome to Benchwarmers, man. We are excited to have you, bro. Diego, Diego. All right. Give, give, give uh, the, the listeners around the world that we got. The the four one one on on who you support and you know give us a little bit by yourself. Uh, a little bit by into myself. Those, into, into those, that be, those beautiful eyes. Oh man, I don't <laughs> people can't that. see because you have glasses on. No, no see man, you. I know, man. <laughs> I don't know about that. Well, I mean, I, I'm first and foremost a Manchester United supporter, true <gasps> and true. So this is something that. Oof. I, I remember the first time I saw them play. Uh, that was like back, back around like high school days, and I've been following them even since before that. Uh, I've learned a lot about their history, about the club. Uh, I love how they, at least before, they had a really a- attacking football ethos. Um, I, I will glow, but I also have to stay factual. I know oh. uh, I, I got to check Simone. myself. Oh, 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 I like that. But uh, but that's uh, that's what I support right now. So we've we've been. Th- We've been through a rough patch uh, the last few years. A lot of changes, a lot of turmoil. Things are looking up right now. I'm not going to get into that. So, Diego, uh, who, who are your national teams? My national teams? Well, um, <clears throat> thanks to both parts of my family, uh, I do follow the Mexican national team. That's part of my mother's side. Uh, the Colombian national team, part of my father's side. And to be completely honest, even though I didn't follow the U.S. men's national team because oh, 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 of wait. of a cultural, uh, a, a culturally, let's say. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is the first time you're about to say this, so I want to I want to make sure <laughs> this is captured. So please, yeah, Diego. No, I'll say it. I'll say it straight up, and and I'll get to I'll explain a little bit as to why. But you know, being um, of Mexican descent, having a lot of Mexican family around me, growing up with a lot of Mexican family members. You know, the U.S.-Mexico rivalry was always really big. Yeah. And we'd always yeah. even Chuck get together for, for friendlies, for official matches. We'd go to matches. Uh, so it's always been, you know, Mexico over U.S. And up until recently, you know, I didn't really pay any mind to the national team. And uh, I had the pleasure of meeting with and actually speaking to Tyler Adams. Tyler Adams, let's go. He's been really close, really close to me. He's been a he's super cool guy, super down to earth, uh, wisdom beyond his years, whatever you want to call it. He, the fact that he's only 19 and he shows the level of maturity, that kind of helped me turn around and and want the U.S. men's national team to be better. You know, to kind of to to put my support behind him so he could be better. So, very coincidentally and almost ironically. His very first international goal came against Mexico. Oh, in word. That in that friendly, so that was kind of like one of those stars aligned type of things. Like, how could I, how could I not support him now? So, uh, I will on the record say that I am definitely for the stars and the stripes in terms Shit. of oh their, my god, their footballing, <laughs> their footballing progress. So I do hope that things get better. Um, I have my own opinions about that. Super reserved. Yeah. I'm not gonna get into that, but. The, the, this is me declaring an official support and fandom for the men's national team. Holy uh, shit! Damn, they, that's, they, they improved from from now on. And know, that just took how long? <laughs> oh, that's uh, yeah, twenty on, what years? <laughs> only, only on bench warmers, man. Only my on bench warmers. My whole life, my whole life. That's a real. That's a, that's a bench. That's a bench warmers exclusive, man. <laughs> <laughs> my man, my man, they swallow. They gonna go back and think I hate my life for saying this shit. <laughs> I hope Kyle heard this. I'm probably going to eat my words. I'll probably going to eat shit later, but whatever. Don't worry. Nah, don't we'll, we'll, we'll remind you what you bro. said. We'll eat shit with you, bro, because we're all in this together now in this shit boat, bud. <laughs> <laughs> all yeah, right, man, all right. I'm, I'm giving you guys hella sound bites to pull and play back to me. <laughs> For real. Now, 
since we're going to get into transfer rumors and we have you on now, thankfully. Tell us a bit about how this Carlos Vela to Barcelona rumor is looking to you. Well, that, that actually, to me, uh, I mean, people see it from both sides, I guess. Um, I've actually, I've watched a few uh, pundits on TV argue it, especially on like, um, like Jorge Ramos, people like that. And I personally, I'll, I'll say what I think first or what I believe. I, I think it's, it's a dumb move. I, I don't think it'll be, or rather, I don't think it's a smart move for Vela because he's perfectly fine where he is. He's literally, you could argue that he's literally the king of LAFC. He he's is. a marquee player. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's, he's selling, he sells merchandise. Um, as far as like his stats that, that I do know of because he is a Mexican international. He led the team with 14 goals last season uh, for like, you know, the regular league games. Oh yeah, yeah good question, in, good uh, question. He led the team in assists. I'm pretty sure he had about like 16 or so assists, something like that. Uh, like unreal numbers for a striker on top of that. Yeah, cool question. So, so Yeah, 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 Diego, Diego, Diego. Are you a Vela fan? Am I a Vela fan? <laughs> Are you? I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my man just gave every stat in the book, yo. Man, like, did, did his homework yeah. before he actually hopped on. My man, yo. Listen, listen. My man, like... Nah, like, yeah, like, you know, you just, you know, check out his Wikipedia. I just happen to know his all his... I think it's easier. I I could tell you, I I could spit out some Tricky Lozano stats if if you want to go there. No, we can only do it with one Mexican at a time. (laughs) Speaking of bench players, speaking of the super sub coach himself, Ali, is he, what's next for him? Is he, is he, is he, is he he staying United? Or is he out? Uh, look is, at that is, smile. Is, this, is this all hot? Yeah, look we already saw that. Smile. Oh, Ollie. Ooh, ooh, I'm like, yeah. who the my fuck man, is Ollie? I'm, I'm looking at Eric like, who is Ollie? And then he I just, realized, oh, I know. He's got a horny. He puts a tent oh, in his oh, pants oh. right now, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm happy right now because having Solskjaer back is is like the... I'm not talking about like coaching-wise. I'm talking about like personality-wise. He's He was like the perfect person to get into that changing room. And to bring everyone's spirits up because this guy, like, have you seen his? Have you seen his interviews? Like, this guy smiles for everything. He, I thought I was say he looks what, happy is, all the time. Was he Kante from but in coach version? <laughs> that, that he's creepy, man. He creeps me out. He, he <laughs> he's like seventy years old, but he's still got a baby face somehow. He does have a baby face. <laughs> he does it's creepy. have a baby face. He does. He does. That's what happens when you win so many trophies and a trouble oh, in your career. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take the mic away from him. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, uh, I think I think he's not going to stay, but that's not going to be his choice. I think he's not going to stay because he's going to get forced out by the board. I really I really believe that um, Ed Woodward and whoever's behind him uh, in terms of appointing the next manager, I really think it's going to be someone that they feel is going to really bring money to the club. I, I, might, I might eat my words later. I think that he's fitting right now as a short-term solution. He's been he's been great um, because he's been he's beaten yeah really small teams you know like Watford. Well, I mean Spurs. Spurs really small <laughs> clubs. So, Throwing a little shade there. God damn. So oh now I now I get the five o'clock shadow on your face there. All right. Like like come on like, like come on lads it's Tottenham please. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so he's. He's in short, he's injecting positivity to the players. They're having a bit more creative freedom on the pitch. But I think ultimately it's not gonna be up to him to stay and, and they might they might force him out, which is gonna be unfortunate because I think the club is, is getting some some sort of identity back. But uh if it were for me, I would try it out. But like keep him after after the he's season. He's not gonna be given the chance. Like keep him for the the beginning of next season to see how he tries out. That'd be great. That'd be great, but he's already said he's already t- said you know factually that his contract is only up until the summer, and then he has to go back to Molda. I mean, I forget what did we say? Did we say he's staying or did we say he's? Out? I said he's staying. I said he's staying. You guys, I think, said he was. Out. I, I'm pretty sure. I, I'm, I'm I'm convinced. I said he was out because I don't think he's out. He's gone. He's gone. Yeah, not a big enough name. So he's. Uh, the, uh, I I coaching wise, coaching wise, yeah, Southgate. Yeah, I believe that. I could totally believe that. Yeah. So, you guys got to get a Zidane. You got to get a Pochettino. Um, 
I don't, so, I'm, I don't see it happening though. <laughs> the, the, the Pochettino rumors have to stop, man. Like, why would we, why, why do we go with someone who hasn't done anything in the last? Uh, how many seasons has he been at Spurs already? Like that's Five, that's six. how that's how uneventful his tenure at Spurs has been. Like nobody knows how long he's been. There. You do realize you had David Moyes already, right? Like yeah, of oh. course. Yeah, and that was that was that was Alex Ferguson, Sir Alex's like personal pick, and it didn't work out. It was it exactly. was you know it was a Scotsman trade. You know what I mean? Like it was someone that he he knew personally and that he believed could carry on the club. No, but, but what I'm saying is, look at where Moyes came from. He was on Everton for a minute. He had great good numbers, no nothing over the top. But at the end of the day, you know, he hadn't won anything. And that's, that's what Poch is. Basically, it just looks like a newer, cleaner, younger package. Not as ugly as David Moyes, you know? I'll take that. I'll take that argument for sure. For so, sure. you think you're repeating, be... you're repeating your same mistake if you take him or? I, I, I think it's a mistake. Like you're saying, like you're saying it yourself. We, we already went through this before with Moyes. Someone who uh, has probably been with the club for X amount of years, but they hadn't. They hadn't propelled themselves or the team to another level by winning anything. So why do we want that? I think it's a step back. Here we go. Yeah. yeah. So I have one quick question for yeah. um for the red. Well, we're all reds in this. And I guess we'll call it red. Literally, yeah. everybody, <laughs> even the bench. Yeah. yeah, the bench. Yeah, for real. There's so, a reason why right, we chose so red. So let me ask you about the one of the biggest rivalries in the Premier League, and what does this? Liverpool kind of dominance feel as a United fan and Edgar, how do you feel as a Liverpool fan like oh, shit, well to begin in. with it's not a dominance Oh, there's no dominance right now we've won nothing so we oh. have control of it and I enjoy that we had semi control last season and I enjoyed that but really has the rivalry, rivalry really lived up to what it's been before Diego I think it will uh, last match was whack it, it was, it was. Like, I, I agree with that. I wouldn't call it dominance. I, I just think it's just straight annoying. Like, you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I'm being sincere here. I'm being sincere. Like, you know when you're just enjoying... You're enjoying your meal and then you see, like, a random fruit fly just come around and just start buzzing around you. You just want them to leave. Like, that's... The, I feel like that's how most, most United fans feel. I, I feel like that. Because I recognize that Liverpool are doing well. They're doing great uh, in the league. And then it's just like that that imminent approach of success uh, of of getting at least at least a league. Um, I would say I don't know about anything else. Um, definitely not a FA Cup, but I'd say I'd say the league at least. You know, there's it's like a threat almost. It's a threat to. Oh, it is a threat. It is. It is. That's it, that's your only claim to fame to, over us um, for what ever. I yeah, that's, that's been your speech for like the last 30 years, which in do right, you should say it. But now it seems like yeah. the tables are turning. Yeah, no. And it, for the rivalry is good. For the rivalry is positive because it'll give them something to say after they've been repeating the same thing for the last 20 years. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, 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 right now, right now I'm excited because we're going to be facing each other in a couple of weeks. It's going to be yes. interesting. It's not going to be a Mourinho game. It's not literally Mourinho took out all the energy from this great rivalry. And now it's going to be, you know, you guys hold the future for Man City and for Liverpool. Is it watching the two happiest guys go at it? <laughs> Ollie and Klopp, fucking bright ass teeth. Hey, and then Ollie, baby face assassin over here. Yeah, man. For yeah, real. Man. It'd be uh, Mr. Smiles against Mr. Hugs. For real. Oh, yeah, yeah for God. real. It's a Care Bear edition of the... <laughs> Care Bear Steer. Thank you, Thank you later. Netflix. Um, <laughs> damn. I don't know. I, just, I, I can't wait to see you guys go at it. I just, I'm just i so excited. It's got to build up. It's got to build up. we got to see how we're, much sketch is going to matter. We're, we're going to build it up here. We're going to build it up. Yeah, we're going to build it. Thursday beforehand. Uh, but, I mean, all right. That, that, that's overtime, guys. We wanted to bring in Diego. We wanted to show you guys the new the new bench formers that are going to be sitting along with us sooner than later. Right, QD Patuti? Thank you. Thank you. Beer. Yes, it's, it's a huge honor. It's a huge honor to be collaborating with you guys, man. I've been looking forward to it. Definitely. <laughs> Edgar just cheered Diego. Okay, Edgar just cheered with, so, with you. <laughs> uh, with that being said, guys, thank you for listening. And you know where to find us. Make sure you leave a like and a comment and a follow. So appreciate that. Catch you next, what, Sunday? Right? Yeah, we're back Sunday. Back on Sunday. Peace.